Hi everyone, it's MJ Kinman, and I can't tell you how excited I am that you're thinking about making Catherine, and better yet, that you're thinking about making Catherine your own with your own customization. I designed this quilt with exactly that in mind, that you could take this pattern, which has eight fabrics, just eight, and you could either change one of them, you could change all of them, you could flip the value contrast and make it your own gemstone, whether it's a diamond, a sapphire, a ruby, a tourmaline, an ametrine with both purple and citrine. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And so this video is to give you maybe some ideas uh, what you might be able to do with the pattern and um, let your imagination run wild. Let's talk about customizing Catherine. Now, this is the image of the gemstone that inspired Catherine. I loved everything about this gem. I loved how she was full of light. You can see all of this wonderful light up in the upper uh, top and the little bit up to the left-hand corner. And then as you move down through the table facet and into the lower, fa uh, the, the lower facets, it becomes much more um, uh, interesting regarding value contrast. And that's what I love most about gemstones. I like gemstones or images of gemstones that have some asymmetry to them because what that does is it leads your eye around. Your eye literally is, is moved and pulled by the, the pools of light and the pools of dark to explore all the different facets of the gemstone. If you have a perfectly symmetrical gemstone in terms of color placement, in terms of value placement, your eye has nowhere to go. And so it just lays there like a lump of coal. I thought this gemstone did anything but lay there like a lump of coal. Also, she is a very popular cut. This is a Brilliant Cut Solitaire. Now, Brilliant Cut Solitaires are, it's probably um, one of the most uh, beloved cuts and popular cuts and common cuts when it comes to jewelry for engagement rings, special anniversary presents, and so on. So I wanted to use this particular cut for my second Diamond Diva pattern so that you specifically could take this pattern, take this pattern and the colorway, and turn it into your own so that if you have a special couple who's getting married next year, you could make them a diamond wedding ring quilt. Um, if you have an anniversary, a couple, a couple who's celebrating their anniversary, you could make a quilt for them as well. And we know what the anniversary years are for diamond. It's 10, 50, and 60. So it used to be just the 50th and the 60th were the diamond uh, anniversary years, but Tiffany and company, got tired of waiting until couples wait, uh, were married for 50 and 60 years. And how often does that happen? Uh, before they sold them their diamond. And so they thought they'd squeeze in diamond at uh, year number 10 to celebrate the, uh, the diamond uh, anniversary. As I mentioned, I love this gemstone because she's filled with light. And the implications for that is that the first four and five fabrics are very light in value. Here are the color um, charts for the three different colorways of Catherine, the champagne, the white diamond, and then the blue diamond. And you can see it's really skewed. The first four or five pat, uh, fabrics are skewed towards a lighter value. And then it turns into more of a, a medium value and a darker value. Again, in the blue, we've got a white and some uh, light to medium values, and then it gets very dark. Over here on the white diamonds, you've got two very light values. You've got some, medium, uh, some light to medium values, and then the dark values. And also the darkest value in the diamond, which is fabric code H, is not a true black. These last two little lines here, um, it says super black. That is for the background and the binding. But H, H is actually a facet, um, is assigned to uh, a series of facets within the gemstone. So in the champagne colorway, it's an eggplant color. Within the white diamond, it's a charcoal color, not a pure black. And within the blue, Catherine, it is a, a night sky. It's a deep, dark blue. It's not a black, but it's a nice, deep, dark blue. The other thing uh, I, I like about this is, as I mentioned, the interesting dispersion of color and value contrast. And the design implication here is that color placement is not symmetrical. It is uh, very random. And in fact, I just wanna share that with you. 
when it comes to gemstones, this is just one personality of this single gemstone. If you were to move this gemstone just a fraction, just a fraction, she would throw off an entirely different pattern of lights and darks and colors. Her personality would change. And it's simply a result of the facets in relationship to the light source. So people always ask me, what is the best placement of color? What is the best placement of the values in my gemstone? The answer is there is no right placement, which means there's no wrong placement. So what I want you to do is just relax and enjoy and make this your own. The first colorway is a champagne color. I wanted to use uh, uh, hues of ivory and light pink and coral uh, and then this eggplant color. I also turned her into a blue diamond, a light blue diamond filled with light. And so you can see there's a lot of light blues, maybe a little bluish lavender, periwinkle color, and then a, a, a dark blue that's, that's not quite black. And then finally, we have the white diamond, ivory, um, maybe a little bit of a gray with a, a, a pink background, a pink undertone, a gray with a little bit of a blue or purple undertone, um, another gray with maybe a taupe undertone, and then the steel and the graphite. I'm, I'm very excited about this color because I think this is going to uh, present great opportunities for, for all of you. So here are some of the things that you could do to customize your Catherine pattern. The first one is to swap out one or more colors from the existing colorways. So for example, if you were working on the champagne gemstone and you said, you know what, I like this rose color right here, say this, this, um, this wonderful rose color, which is the G code, right? And I think though that I want that to be a little bit more lavender, you could make that switch. And you see the different personality it gives the gemstone. So just by switching out one color, you can change the personality of the gem. Another idea for replacing one code or even part of one code is to introduce fire into your gemstone. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about brilliance, fire, and scintillation. So here is a little glass sculpture of a brilliant solitaire, what we were just looking at. Right? And what I'd like you to do is think about this brilliant cut solitaire, this little sculpture, as a series of windows and mirrors. This part of the gemstone is the crown. This uh, is the part of the gemstone that light enters into. So these are the windows. All of these facets up top are the windows. And then it goes into the depth of the gemstone and all of these facets, this part of the pavilion, this is the crown, this is the pavilion. Um, these act as mirrors and the light just bounces, bounces, bounces around these mirrors until it pops back out through the windows at the top back to your eye. When it pops back to your eye as pure white light, as full spectrum light, that's called brilliance. And to have really wonderful brilliance, you also need the dark parts. So that's why I put those darker facets in there as well, right next to the white ones, because that sets them off. That's what you call bling. Now, sometimes when that light dives into the depths of a gemstone, it bounces, 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 and then it pops back out to your eye. But instead of pure white light, it splits into the different frequencies of color. And that's where you get the beautiful flashes of green and blue and gold and red and purple. So for example, here's one of my favorite books in the world. It's called Tiffany Diamonds. It's all about, uh, obviously, Tiffany Diamonds. But do you see this gorgeous image on the front? This is the fire. You see all of this wonderful brilliance coming out at you, the white light right here, but then you have this pops of color right here. That's called fire. That's what you can do with Catherine. Maybe in your stash you have a beautiful gradient that goes from uh, red to yellow to orange, uh, red to orange to yellow, or maybe a beautiful gradient that goes from uh, blue to green. That could be replaced as one of the facets, and you could put some pops of color in there, pops of fire in there. Can't wait to see it. Another idea you could do is basically replace all the codes, all the codes with your own selection of fabrics of one or several colors. What if I prefer a lavender diamond instead of a champagne diamond or a white diamond or a blue diamond? Well, it, it has everything to do with value contrast and a progression of values. So in my pattern on page two, you'll see that I have a grayscale for you that kind of gives you a sense of the uh, changes 
that are required within the value contrast. And so let's show you, show you a little bit here. I put together a little gemstone that does have the lavender. You can see A, I used white as all the other gemstones did. Okay, then we go to B. And B, can you see the outlines of B? Like it's a very faint purple color, just a very faint purplish color. C, uh, let's see if we can see it. Oh, here we go. C is again, just a little bit darker. D, you can see the outlines, just darker still. E, again, it's more of a medium tone. F, it's moving into those darker ranges. G, and H. H is the darkest of them all. So if you were to gather a selection of fabrics in one queue and arrange them in a value progression, you could assign them letters A through H. And there you have your gemstone. Now keep in mind, this pattern skews very heavily towards the lighter side. Um, there are more A's, B's, and C's than there are F, G, and H. But what if I wanted my lavender diamond to flash with a bit of pink? Well, you know what you could do there? You could select one of the color codes like B and say, I think I'm gonna replace the, all the B's with a nice, beautiful pink. There we go. Now it's beginning to shine with a little bit of a pink glow. I think I want a little bit more, so I'm gonna pick D. I think I'm gonna find a, um, a, a value of pink that is very similar to the same value, the medium value of the lavender, and I'm gonna swap it out. There you go. Now I'm looking at that and I like that, but maybe that's a little too much pink. Maybe I don't want it quite that pink. You know what you can do? you can assign two fabrics of the same value to a single code, and you could cut facets from both for a more colorful diamond. So for example, do you see here, I have on, in D, I have, I'm using both the purple and the pink. And up in this quadrant, I left all of uh, this quadrant's uh, facets assigned to the D colorway as lavender. And down here in this quadrant, I also kept them lavender, but in this quadrant, the upper right-hand quadrant and the lower left quadrant, I decided to replace them with the pink. Do you see how that asymmetry really makes your eye move around the gemstone? Now, a question is, how do I know that I'm getting the same value between these two hues, between a purple and a pink? Well, Joseph Albers uh, was a wonderful art teacher back in the 1950s, a wonderful artist, and he also taught. And he wrote a wonderful book called Interaction of Color. Fabulous book, kind of mind blowing. I'm still trying to get my, my brain around it. But his premise is that it's really difficult for humans to separate value from color. So for example, which of these two colors do you think is the lighter value? In my view, I would have thought that it's this pink one that's lighter. This one would show darker, but this one is lighter. But looks what, look what happens when we drain the color from them and it becomes a pure grayscale, they are virtually identical. The value of these two hues is identical, but the hue is different. It's so hard to detect it. Let's do another example. Look at these three lighter colors. It's a light pink, kind of a light blue, and then more of a brighter yellow. I would have thought that this bright yellow was darker than these two, and that probably the pink would be the lightest value of the three. But when we drain the color away and we go straight to a grayscale, virtually identical. So how do you do that? One way that I'm going to encourage you to find the value, the grayscale of a set of fabrics, whether it's one hue or it's a range of hues, is you can do this with your phone. So what you'd want to do is arrange your fabric in a progression of values as best you can. And if you're dealing with two different hues, like a pink, like a purple, keep those piles separate. Go ahead and uh, do the pink in a value progression and then the lavender in a value progression. Then snap a photo of it with your Android or your iPhone. And I'm going to talk about Android here first because it's a little bit different for iPhones. Once you have snapped that photo, open the image in your gallery or wherever you uh, store those images that you take on your phone. At the bottom, select the diagram of three interlocking circles. It looks like a little Venn diagram. 
And that's the little icon that will bring up all your filters. Next, select the image or the filter labeled grayscale. Compare your fabrics to the grayscale on page two of the instruction booklet for Catherine, and then modify your selection as needed and audition fabrics of the same value. Now, here's how to do it for iPhones. You, again, you arrange your fabric in a progression of values as best you can. Click the camera icon so you're actually looking through your phone in camera mode. And you don't actually have to take a picture on an iPhone in order to select the little interlocking circles Venn diagram from the filters list. You can then select the filter labeled grayscale and then compare your fabrics to the grayscale on page two of the instruction booklet and then modifying your selection as needed and audition fabrics of the same value. So with Android, you have to actually snap that little picture and then open it up in gallery. With iPhones, you don't have to take the picture. You can actually do all your work just looking through the camera because it applies the filters to the viewfinder. Now, if you wanna take a picture, of course you can and then uh, apply the filter to it. So for example, here is the grayscale that's on page two. And then I have assembled a range of fabrics through lots of different hues, right? I've got pinks, I've got blues, I've got greens, um, and I've got purples down here. And I've put them together in a progression of values that mm, I think might actually work. I snap a picture of it on my Android, I open it up in gallery and I apply the grayscale filter and look what happens. All that color drains away and now I can see it for what it truly is. I can actually separate these into the, um, like an A value would be a white. And then I could say, which of these do I want for a B value? Which of these do I want for a C value? What about the D? How about E? Would that work well for an E value? How about an F, G and H? And then I can begin uh, separating them into the different piles of B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And I can begin auditioning them saying, do I like this better or do I like that better? Do I like this better or do I like that better? And you know, you will know it once your heart goes, oh. once you gasp, you will know that you have found your perfect combination of color. Now, let's talk about creating a darker gem by substituting a darker value of fabric for A and then assembling a fabric collection of progressively darker values. As I mentioned before, my gemstone is full of light. The first four or five colors, the, the letters, are skewed toward the lighter side of the uh, value progression. What if, though, I want to make a beautiful smoldering ruby. Look at this. Isn't she gorgeous? And so I don't see any whites, do I? I don't even think I see a light value that, that reflects this color, this value of B or even C. I think probably the, the first value that I see here is maybe a mid-tone that I would, wouldn't find until I start uh, cutting out D. So what I can do is I can actually adjust everything. So let's take a look at this. First thing I want to do is I think I'm going to try to find that beautiful cherry pink there. All right. And I'm going to drop her. Here's all the A facets with this wonderful kind of a bright pink. Now for B, I'm going to go with a little bit brighter fuchsia. For C, I think I'm going to go for even a deeper fuchsia. D, I think I'm going to go for a brick red. I love the brick red in that ruby. And that's where I'm going to head with D. E is going to be almost a um, darker uh, fuchsia, almost like a burgundy, a light burgundy. F is going to be a lovely maroon. G is going to be darker still. And H is almost a black, but it has a little bit of a red undertone. Do you see how you can shift the value in A up to a darker value and then assemble a collection of fabrics that are progressively darker? to make a really deep, wonderful, smoldering gemstone. How did we do? I think we came pretty close. So I hope this has given you some ideas of how you can take Catherine and make her your own by swapping out the colors, changing the colors. And you know what? I would love it if we all thought about making gemstones that haven't even been discovered yet right? Gemstones that haven't been pulled out of the earth yet. We don't even know they exist. What would its name be? I think mine would be a kinmonite, 
of course. Um, where does it live? Where did they find it? Is it in the mountains of North Carolina? Is it on the dark side of the moon? What are its healing powers? What are its special properties? Your imagination is the only limits. The possibilities are endless. I hope you have fun with Catherine. I hope you have fun with this process. Shine on.